plaintiff shall reimburse defendant the cost of the use of Silverlink. The reimbursement may be deducted from defendant's child support obligation via 100% credit to him if appropriate. But he never, they never reimbursed a Miss Kosar for unnecessary attorney fees, and that brings me before the court. It was never ordered. I understand. Before the court, for reviewing defendant father's parenting time and any other issues. This hearing is being conducted via Zoom. Present is attorney Maria Zagorski representing the plaintiff mother, Kelly Lavoy. Ms. Lavoy is present. Defendant father, Nicholas Alexander, is also present. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Judge. The parties have conferred with Ms. Patrick from the front of the court this afternoon, who has provided the court the fine recommendation. Uh, that uh, defendant father will use Soberlink and all of his scheduled parenting time or whenever the children are in his care until the review date set by the court which is October 15th at 8.30. Parenting time apparently will remain as ordered by this court back in April of 2024. Father has every Tuesday and Wednesday overnight and alternating weekends at 10.30 on Saturdays till Monday morning. That parenting time will continue, Ms. Zagorski, is that correct? Yes, his Saturdays start at 12.30 though. Okay. Uh, further, that with respect to child support, that commencing February 1st, 2024, Defendant Father Nicholas Alexander will pay child support in the amount of $681 for the two minor children of the parties. Uh, based upon 156 overnights to dad, 209 overnights to mom. Uninsured medical expenses shall be divided as follows. 49% paid by the plaintiff mother, 52% paid by the defendant father. Extracurricular activities shall be shared by the parties as follows. Plaintiff mother paying 49%, defendant father paying 51%. That is the recommendation. And again, review October 15th at 8.30. Ms. Gorski, is this recommendation good with your client? It is, Your Honor. Has Mr. Alexander paid the $1,300 previously ordered? He did. All right, thank you. Mr. Alexander, do you understand the recommendation this afternoon? Yes, Your Honor, and I, I do not agree with it. <clears throat> okay, what, what do you not agree with? Um, well, first, the Silverlink, um, I, I agreed originally that I would do it on, on the days that I clarified with Ms. Zaborski at the times that were, were laid forth, and I've done that. Um, and I agreed to do that until today's hearing. Um, I'm asking that that be reviewed and, and be good. Uh, I've had zero uh, uh, positive tests in that time. Um, it was discussed in the beginning that um, you know, at this at this time at this hearing, we would we would go over those findings, and um, at that point, determine whether the um, the temporary order, I guess, was going to continue or not. Um, so I'm asking that we do that. Um, I also, as far as the child support goes, I I guess I would need to get some clarification on on a lot of things with that as well. Okay, I'm not sure if I can answer your question regarding uh, child support. It's all based upon your respective incomes. Did you uh, review your income with Ms. Patrick? Did I did not, not know. Because when I tried to speak to Mr. Alexander, he was very rude, told me to stop talking, and he wanted to speak to the court. So I ran the guidelines, Your Honor, and I can give the court how I did it. The I put mom in at 61000 I put dad in at $74,000. Um, mom has, um, she provides daycare for the youngest child. We put that in at $185 a month, or excuse me, $224 a month. She pays the health care premium. She carries the minor children on insurance at $185. That is how the child support was calculated, Your Honor. Is that a correct statement of your, your income, Mr. Alexander, $74,000? Uh, it's yeah, that's pretty close. <clears throat> but as far as well, the other two go, um, the child care and that I, I guess I don't understand why I would be responsible for child care on her parenting time. Would you I guess like if, to answer if, that, Your Honor. Please, Miss Patrick. Per the Michigan child support guidelines, because mom is working and we included her wage in the calculation, she's entitled to child care, just as you would be entitled to child care if you had it. Because we're using the income while working, we have to um, give credit for child care. 
Okay, so then therefore, if I have child care during my time, that would be calculated as well? That's correct. By a state okay. licensed daycare center that you're paying. We do not use family members. Okay. Does that answer your question um, about child support? Not really, Your Honor. Um, so I get, what I'm asking, Your Honor, is two things. One, um, as far as the issue with Soberlink that, you know, we went over back in April. Um, again, we, we discussed that that would continue until today's hearing um, on the times and days that were laid forth. And I clarified multiple times with Ms. Saborski, and I've done that. And I've done it on every single time I've been asked or ordered to do so. Um, so I'm asking that that be reviewed and, and can be clarified and ended today. There's also, um, you know, the amount of uh, $685 that I've paid for that, that well, I was told that, you know, as long as there were no um, positive results that I would be reimbursed. So I'm asking that we review that. And then, I guess the other issue as far as child support goes, I, I, I really feel like I need to get, I probably need to um, retain counsel to go over that. Um, so I'm, I'm asking that that um, be, uh, I guess, stayed until I can do that and go over that with someone. Is, uh, are you currently, is Mr. Alexander currently paying child support to Ms. Gorski? Is this just an increase? No, he's not paying any support at all. And um, he, no, he's not. He's not paying. Okay. Well, the court's inclined to adopt this recommendation of the child support, Mr. Alexander. You can file, uh, have an attorney, file in the, uh, you can retain an attorney, have the attorney view it. And if the attorney feels that the friend of the court is way off base with a recommendation, uh, you can file a petition to modify it. With respect okay, when, to- when uh, does this take a home? I'm sorry? When would this take effect? February, it's recommended that it take effect to February 1st. Uh, so again, I'm, but so it's, I'm it's, essentially it's not paying any support right now. Effect. The court wants you to pay some support right now. This is going back to February. Obviously when, when mother requested petition the court for child support. My proof of service is January 11th, your honor. Okay. So it's probably go back to February 1st. The court's going to will adopt this recommendation. Uh, so you pay child support 681, there'll be rearages. And uh, get an attorney on board and have that attorney uh, review it. And uh, I'm sure Ms. Uh, Patrick will be available to review with that attorney the amount of child support and how it was ar arrived at. And if, you, if he feels uh, there's a basis to petition the court to modify, you can modify it, Mr. Alexander. With respect to reimbursement for the uh, breath test, the Soberlink, Mr. Gorski, was there any provision, any prior order that provided for address a reimbursement of that expense? Um, if he was clean with every blow, um, oh, my I'm client, sorry, I do see that. Yep. I, yep, I do see that. But but if I may address that, Your Honor, the order was entered on April 1st. Mr. Alexander was supposed to provide four months worth. And this review was set based on four months from April 1st. Mr. Alexander didn't begin the process until May 8th. So first of all, we don't have four months of records. We only have three months. The other issue is that Mr. Alexander has been playing kind of fast and loose with the times that he has to blow. For example, uh, on July 20th, instead of blowing at 1030, he blew at 1145. He came to court today um, claiming that I misinstructed him about whether he had to use it on Thursdays during his parenting time. And I may have said Tuesdays and Wednesdays on his overnights, but he has the children all day on Thursday and he's never, well, he did provide one test on a Thursday. So I think he did know he needed to test on Thursday while he had the kids, but he usually doesn't test on Thursdays at all. He's missed um, times entirely. There was a Tuesday morning when he just didn't blow. Um, so so his record is less than stellar and it hasn't been four months. Has there been any positive tests? There have not. There have not okay. been any positives, but when he misses a test, it may be because he 
has to wait for the alcohol to get out of his system. I did, I, I can provide these to the front of the court office. We do have a hard copy of every time that he's tested with his facial recognition. He has not complied with the times or the dates as ordered. Well, one hour perhaps in this course opinion would not make a difference. If he is supposed to test at 10, 30, test 11, 45, I don't think that the result would, <clears throat> would be affected by an hour and 15 minute delay. Okay, and he was ordered to do four months. So if he wants to do another month and actually test on the Thursdays that he has the children and test on every day that he has the children at the appointed time, he would be in compliance with the order. But today he is not. All right. All right, so we'll move up this review. We'll, we'll give him another, uh, another month on Soberlink and we'll address the reimbursement when we want to come back, Mr. Alexander. So, um, Your Honor, can, again, you can should use it's sort of like on your scheduled parenting time and we'll have the children in your care to review date and we'll set a review date in. Uh, uh, maybe 1st of September. We we'll move it. Your up. Honor, can I, could Let's I just it. please yeah. clarify? One more month me? of sort of like, go ahead, Mr. Alexander. I just wanted to one more month. Okay. I just want to clarify that what we consider parenting time, because I tried to do this in the beginning. And I was told Tuesdays and Wednesdays, and I've tested it all during those times, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, and Saturday starting at 2.30, and then all day Sunday during those times. So I, I just need to clear, if, if I'm not doing it right, I was trying to do it right, and I was trying to do it on the, the days and times. Now, I can't do it exactly on, on those times. As you said, Your Honor, an hour, or honestly, I, it's usually not an hour, maybe 15, 20, 30 minutes if you know, I'm at work or doing something, I'm trying to do what I'm supposed to do. And I tried to clarify this to, to begin with so that there was no hiccups and there was no problems. And, and now here we are and there's, there's hiccups. So okay. I just want to, I want to clarify exactly when I'm supposed to be doing this. I think it's primarily whenever you have parenting time, whenever the children are with you. So the order says, on your parenting time days, uh, 6.30 a.m., 10.30 a.m., 2.30 p.m., 6.30 p.m., 10.30 p.m. No reason to be an hour late, Mr. Alexander. You just you go into, uh, uh, if you're at work, you go into an outside another office, you go into the restroom and then test. You do that in your privacy. You should, there's no reason why you should be doing an hour, hour late. Um, so I'm not sure where the confusion lies. These are your, your parenting times are every Tuesday and Wednesday overnight and alternate weekends. Saturdays at 12.30 to Monday morning. Ms. Gorsuch, you right. want to clarify your understanding of when he's going to supposed to? Uh, no, Judge. He Dr. Asked, Sir Blake? I think I think the confusion came from me saying Tuesdays and Wednesdays because he has those overnights, and he he took advantage of me not saying specifically Thursday, despite the fact that he has the children all day Thursday. Mr. Alexander likes to look for any loophole and take advantage of it. And that's what he did. The, your order is very clear. And I don't represent him, work for him, or advocate for him. If he had any questions, he should have been asking the friend of the court or consulting with counsel. And I find it um, offensive that he shows up today and blames me for his lack of compliance. What are Mr. Alexander's what's his parenting time on Thursdays? He has the children until my client gets off work Thursday evenings and picks them up. And he has never blown on a Thursday, or a Monday morning. except for once. And he's never blown on a Monday morning. And he has the children on Monday mornings. So like, I, that's that's what I was saying about playing. He's playing it fast and loose, Judge. Your okay, Honor, I'm not just, trying to play any game. I'm just trying to clear. I was not trying okay, to play any game. Let's spell out. Let's spell oh. out every day and time, OK? Uh, OK. Saturday. The test at uh, uh, what time? The, the, the order is not, doesn't address every day, it just says parenting time days. So when he gets the children at 12.30 on Saturdays, does he test uh, at what, 10 o'clock? He should start at 2.30 in the afternoon. Well, should he, should he test before he has the children? Well, we would love that, but he's he, he's never, he's only done it while the children are in his care. It would be nice to know right. that he's right. going into it. All right, let's keep that then while the children is care. So when the children are with you Saturday through Monday, you, you test at <clears throat> on the Saturday and Sunday. Uh, Saturday at 10 30, 2 30, 6 30, and 10 30. Then Sunday, 6 30, 10 30, 2 30, 6 30, and 10 30. And uh, then Monday morning, what time do the children uh, leave your possession on Monday mornings? 
after I get off work. He, he has them all day until my client's done with work. So he should be testing okay. all day long. So he should be testing all day on Monday as well as on Thursdays, Mr. Alexander. Until what time Monday? When, when, uh, well, what time do the children leave your possession? Well, I, I drop them off in the morning, but I mean, I obviously not drinking at work, so, but I, I'm not trying when, to, when the children in your just, possession, if you drop off the children at, uh, that, uh, 10 o'clock, then I guess, uh, I drop them off at eight and I drop them off at eight in the morning on Mondays and eight in the morning on Thursdays. So they blow at six 30 in the morning. Okay. And then, so. I just want to clarify the times then. So I'll just start on Monday. So Monday, um, I need to blow at 6.30 in the morning. When the children are in your possession, correct. Well, okay. But, and then on, on Tuesday, I'm, I'm sorry, on Mr. Tuesday, I picked, for... the, I picked them up at 5.30. So on Tuesday, then I would start at 6.30 and at 10.30, correct? Judge, Mr. Alexander. And then on, on I'm, I'm going to talk with Ms. Patrick. Ms. Patrick, can you spell out the days and the times that he'll blow, please? Go let's walk through every day. And we'll specify the dates on the times on what, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, Sundays, and Mondays. If yes, you can sir. set forth that. And uh, if you could, Ms. Patrick, we have time. Yes, And sir. then we'll come back. And we'll set a review Thank date uh, for the 1st of September. We'll get another review date. So if you put that in the order. I'm sorry. Okay, uh, give me September 3rd, September 4th. How about September 4th? Nine o'clock? Yeah. How about review on September 3rd, nine o'clock? You available? September 3rd? Or the 4th? We're going to give you one more month of a sober link. I prefer four. I'm sorry, Your Honor, you're asking me. Ms. Uh, Zagorski, are you available on the 3rd or 4th of September? I can make myself available, yes, Judge. Okay. So, uh, interesting. And yes, um, we can do 9 3 at 9 o'clock. How about 9 o'clock on the Tuesday, September 3rd, day after Labor Day? Sure. Will that work with you, Mr. Alexander? That doesn't really work for me. You said 9 o'clock? Yes, 9 a.m. September yeah, 3rd? 9 3. Yes. It's a two, Tuesday works. morning? I, I'm yes, sorry. That works. That doesn't work for my client. She has to do the payroll at work. Can we do the fourth instead? Okay. Okay, we'll go to the 10th. 930 on the September 10th. That's fine. All right, Ms. Patrick, we can put a review September 10th at 930. If you can meet with uh, Ms. Gorski, Mr. Alexander, specify each day that the, the intent of the court is that Mr. Alexander Smith to the sober link during his parenting time. Yes, Your Honor. And the order, or the last order that was entered does not specify Thursdays and Mondays, but obviously he's got the children with him sometime on Thursdays and Mondays. All right, thank you, Ms. Patrick. Uh, Mr. Alexander, put you back in the break room with Ms. Patrick, and you can go through and we'll spell it out. But I want one more, one more month of, of, of testing, and if there's no positive, then we can talk about uh, reimbursement. We come back. Okay. The purpose of reviewing uh, father's parenting time, particularly the continuation of Soberlink. This hearing is being conducted via Zoom. President is Attorney Maria Zagorski, representing the plaintiff, Kelly Lavoie. Ms. Lavoie is present with Ms. Zagorski. In addition, Attorney Matthew Vitado is present, representing the defendant, uh, Nicholas Alexander. Mr. Alexander appears to be present with Mr. Vitado. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Um, the court has uh, received the fine recommendation from Ms. Pratt. I thought she was on vacation this week. Okay. The recommendation, Mr. Pratt, is that the father may discontinue the use of Soberlink. However, the prohibition of, uh, about alcohol consumption uh, immediately preceding or during parenting time shall continue. There should be no alcohol consumption by either party before or during parenting time. Uh, neither party shall transport the children after alcohol consumption. Uh, the party shall share, split the cost of Soberlink device, the mother's portion being $446, which shall be credited toward child support arrearages. That is a recommendation. And Ms. Gorski, is this recommendation group with your client this morning? It is. Thank you, Judge. And Mr. Vito, is this recommendation group with your client this morning? 
It is not, Your Honor. Uh, specifically, my uh, client would object to the portion related to the reimbursement of the expenses. Uh, he believes that it should be 100% reimbursement and not the one half. And the basis for that um, is the uh, April 18th order regarding those tests, which states, and I quote, for a period of four months, defendant shall use soberly on his parenting time days and shall be tested for alcohol use at 6.30 a.m., 10.30 a.m., 2.30 p.m., 6.30 p.m., and 10.30 p.m. The cost of sober link initially shall be paid by defendant. If any results reflect alcohol use, defendant shall be solely responsible for costs associated with the use of sober link. If the results reflect no alcohol use, plaintiff shall reimburse defendant the cost of the use of sober link. The reimbursement may be deducted from defendant's child support obligation via 100% credit to him if appropriate. The, determin the determination of which shall be made at the review hearing as set forth below. Um, and this okay, now what's the this order, Mr. Vidal? You're reading really quick and I'm trying to find the court order. What, what's the date of the order? Uh, it was April 18th of this year. And it's page two. Okay. And it's the, the second full paragraph on page two, Your Honor. Okay, I, I see what you're referring to. And so obviously the, what the total is about $900, is that correct? And is this 446 is one half? Yeah, it's 892, Your Honor. Yes, that's the full amount. Okay. All right, uh, Ms. Gorski, your response to that? The language does seem to suggest that if the results reflect no alcohol use, plaintiff shall reimburse the defendant for the cost of the civil link. Yes, Judge. Um, and you'll recall that the court adjourned this for four months. And we were back before your honor on August 6th. And at that time, it was determined that Mr. Alexander had only tested for three months instead of four because he put it off for a month. And then when we looked at the results, despite the order that, that you just reviewed being very clear, Mr. Alexander couldn't figure out what 6.30, 10.30, 2.30, 6.30, and 10.30 meant on his parenting time. And in fact, he was testing late and he was missing all of his Tuesday morning tests. Um, no, I'm sorry, he was missing every Thursday morning test except for one. He knew he was supposed to test on Thursday because he tested once, he just didn't do it every Thursday. Um, and he was missing some Tuesday mornings. And so we had to go back in with Ms. Patrick and we had to enter an order that set forth, it was a ridiculous order that apparently Mr. Alexander required because he didn't understand the order of April 18th. Um, in great detail, Ms. Patrick had to set forth on every single day what time he had to test. My client incurred unnecessary attorney fees because of his noncompliance, and my client is here again today because of his noncompliance. We had to extend it another month, and we don't really know whether he was compliant for those first three months because he was missing tests all the time. And so I think it's appropriate and fair that they share the cost because he's not 100% compliant. I'll give you, after, after your warning last time, that he'd be on time and within five minutes for the last month he has been, but the first three months he wasn't. And I could arguably assert that my client should only be responsible for the last month, but in the spirit of compromise, she agreed to split the cost. Your Honor, I would like to respond. Please, Ms. Fiddo. Your Honor, um, the confusion with my client's lack of testing arose uh, based on my understanding is that uh, when the order came down, he had contacted Ms. Zagorski to ask to clarify what days he was supposed to test on. And uh, I don't know whether or not she was reading from the order, and I'm certainly not trying to blame her for that, but there was some miscommunication about what those days were. And I think she rightly notes that he had an obligation to review the order and follow the order and not what counsel warranted, but he was also without counsel at that time. And he saw her as, a, as, a, as an authority. And so he had contacted her to get the Soberlink uh, contact information. Uh, and they had some email exchanges, I believe, uh, where she had said that um, she believed that uh, Jeff Finley was the person at probation who was uh, the person that sets that up and she was going to give him a few days to, uh, you know, get back with her or whatever. And so that um, few days uh, stretched out to be approximately a month. But my client, once he had that information, immediately went and set that up. And uh, he, there was a point where the Soberlink device was not working correctly and he drove all the way out to Warren 
to have the device swapped out because they didn't want any further delays. So I think that he's made a good faith effort to comply. There was some miscommunication about what those dates should have been. Uh, counsel's right that he should have uh, followed the order. However, I think because he mistakenly saw her as, uh, you know, I mean, she is an authority figure, but she's not his his uh, his attorney. But he saw her as this authority figure that could give him that clarified information. He wanted to make sure that he was blowing correctly uh, and timely. It just, you know, he was trying to do it in good faith. And so we're here again in good faith, showing that he hasn't had any positive results. Uh, and the language of the order says that if there are positive results, he's responsible. If there's not positive results, then she's responsible for, for it. And he's not asking her to take it out of pocket. It's just a credit to the arrears that are already on the record. Briefly, Judge, a, a missed test is a positive test in the world of Soberlink. And to say it's just a credit, M Mr. Alexander owes my client over $5,000 in child support. He hasn't paid a dime yet. And so to say it's just a credit, it's not real money, isn't accurate. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. And then again, Mr. Gorsuch, I don't know if you've asked for attorney fees in the past. Obviously, this uh, this whole incident over the last four months would not be necessary, but for Mr. Alexander uh, thinking he can ignore an order of this court. The court recalls very specifically, I know he did reimburse the cost of the private investigator, and he, uh, now saying his agreement, Judge Gorsuch, which we all call consumption, he uh, ignored that court order and actually was consuming, uh, was found to be consuming the alcohol when the children were present with them and he transported the children after having consumed some beers. Uh, I don't know if you asked her for attorney fees throughout this. I mean, uh, that's a, if, if in fact the court wants to, Mr. Mr. Alexander wants the court to follow the strict language of this order, we can address the, uh, that $446 in attorney fees. I mean, Mr. Vito is not unreasonable. Your Honor, he he reimbursed the amount of the private investigator as the court ordered promptly. Right, no question. I say that, but he never re, he never reimbursed the Miss Kosar for unnecessary attorney fees, and that brings me right before the court. It was never ordered. I understand, but the, 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 there was order that he not consume alcohol, and he, he uh, violated that pro prohibition that is judgment of divorce. I'm just I saying understand that, Your Honor. Been, but now we've had three hearings now to uh, address this issue. Uh, Ms. Kozar's unnecessary incurred fees. But I'm just asking if Mr. Gorski, I don't know if you ever asked for attorney fees throughout this uh, proceeding. It, it, Judge, I, I didn't in my initial motion, um, apart from saying all additional relief in accordance with the children's best interest, Mr. Alexander wasn't paying child support. You're right. My client has been paying me to come to court repeatedly because of his violation of a consent order. Uh, and so again, I would say that the splitting the cost of the Soberlink is more than reasonable. He didn't hire an attorney. He didn't follow your order more than once. And we're here today because of his conduct. I did. Mr. Vito, anything further? You know, I'm just asking the court to order what was, uh, you know, to follow the order as it was written. He didn't have any positive results. Uh, all of his re uh, results were negative. Um, and uh, that that is what would be fair. Of course, this is a court of equity and the court determines what's fair. It, clearly, the, the black, clear language of this order does say that the plaintiff would pay 100% of it. Uh, but again, we, we wouldn't be here. And I think this is what, the third, third or fourth hearing regarding this issue, uh, Ms. Gorski, um, prior to your involvement, Mr. Vidado, Mr. Alexander has been before the court a number of times. Uh, I, if I recall, he, until he was confronted with documentation from a private investigator, I mean, he just he was going to ignore this court's order. So the uh, the, the court believes that uh, that the adoption of this recommendation is appropriate and reasonable, given the fact that Ms. Kozar has incurred uh, significant more than. Four five hundred dollars in attorney fees and having bring this matter to the court's attention. So on that basis, and being the court of equity, the court will adopt the recommendation, Mr. Pratt, that uh, the mother's half half the costs. And the court acknowledges that the language of this order says so she should be hundred percent. But uh, if in fact Ms. Sigorski was asked for attorney fees, the court will be inclined to to award that, Mr. Bindo. So in the lieu of coming back on uh, for another hearing on attorney fees, the court will adopt the recommendation. That the mother's share of 446 shall be credited against the child support arrearages. Uh, and hopefully, uh, Mr. Alexander will comply strictly with this order in the future. Uh, all right, with that, the court will adopt the recommendation. Uh, now, conclude this hearing.
Everyone zoom out, have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor.